Throughout the last 50 years, many scientists have searched for direct connections among geological processes and paleoclimate as influential factors during human evolution. Olduvai Gorge, here in the picture, is a UNESCO site situated in North Tanzania. Olduvai has yielded large numbers of hominid remains, stone tools and mammal bones since excavation started in the 1930s. Olduvai is famous as Palashi for the discovery of Parantopos Boisia by the Ligi family. While Olduvai has been occupied through hundreds of thousands of years by early hominids, is still a matter of debate. This is a representation of Bad One at Dubai, and we are aiming to make a similar representation for Tiongo Korongo site, DK in Bad Two. Our approach is using molecules that are preserving the sediments to reconstruct the environment that our ancestors inhabited in East Africa. This work will provide an ecological framework to interpret the archaeological assemblages at the site. The environmental factors, if any, that drove human evolution are yet not very clear especially our ancestors' diet. Early humans' dietary options were designated by the ecosystem in their habitat. We are trying to depict landscape and climate in association with food options available to early humans at Yongo Korongo site. TK, situated where the study is on the map, two kilometers east from the junction of Main and Side Gorge, stratigraphically is in Upper Betu and is related to Tafturi, which has been dated by the Argon Alcorn method to 1.35 million years ago. TK is one of the sites with the highest concentrations of autochthonous preserved Acheulean lithic tools. The sedimentary section is composed of level of tuff, clays and calcareous crust. The remains are principally situated in two paleosurfaces, the TK lower occupation floor and the TK sivatherium floor. The two are stratigraphically close, so there is no significant temporal diachrony, but the technological advancements show strong differences. The Acheulean technology ranged from 1.7 to 0.3 million years ago. The Acheulean technology is thought to be developed by Homo erectus, and the specific purposes of this technology are still a matter of debate. This is a 35cm quartzite hand axe from the TK lower floor. We analyzed the total lipid extract of these sediments, including enalkanes, that are straight chains of saturated hydrocarbons, and fatty acids, that are a straight chain of hydrocarbons with a carboxyl group. And alkanes are produced by plants, algae, and bacteria. Rather, fatty acids are present in the cell membranes of every organism. The carbon isotopic compositions in plant boxes is a very powerful tool to reconstruct the past environment by assessing the relative abundances of C3 to C4 plants. C3 are mostly trees and forbs, C4 plants are grasses and few shrubs. This data is partially available, and I will show only one sample as a representative one. To do lipids analysis, we need to excavate samples from the archaeological site. Here on the left, there is a picture of Tiongo Korongo site with big bones of an elephant in the TK Sivatherium floor. Rather on the right, there is a picture of how the sediments look like at Olduvai. While working with the samples, caution must be taken, as the samples contain low organic matter and the contamination could obscure the original signal. The use of gloves was mandatory while sampling, and especially we had to pay attention to not contaminate the samples with our sweat and sunscreen. The first step in the lab is to freeze dry the sediments and grind around 50 grams of the sediments pre-use to extraction. The extraction was performed using an accelerated solvent extractor with dichloromethane to methanol 5 to 1 volume ratio. The total lipid extra is separated using flash columns chromatography using solvents with increasing polarity. We use the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer that features a combination of two very powerful analytical techniques. Gas chromatography that acts as a molecular separation technique and mass spectrometry which acts as a molecular detection technique. Here on the right there is a picture of the chromatogram of the lymphatic fraction. The enalkanes distributions was not the same in all samples, but most distribution of enalkanes were unimodal, showing a maximum at the enalkane 18 and 20. The enalkanes show stronger odd over even predominance in the long chain than in the short chains of enalkanes. Shorter chains of enalkanes are produced by aquatic plants. Here I plotted the most useful ratios of enalkanes, the carbon preference index CPI and the average chain length ACL. They both show a prevalence of short chain of enalkanes rather than the longer chains. These values are also reflected in the aquatic index PAQ. This means that the environment was dominated by submerged floating macrophytes. 
The polar fraction has been analyzed in the GCMS to identify fatty acids and their relative abundances. All samples have fatty acid and the prevailing ones are the carbon 18, 16 and 22 one. Though these are ubiquitous between all organisms, here there is an overall of the distributions. Here the alkyl bacterial tri fatty acids are represented in blue shades and represent the C20, 22 and 24 fatty acids. Rather in more colors, I report the C3 vascular plant derived fatty acids, such as the 26, 28, 30 and 32. The blue shorter chains are prevailing and are studied through the section. We measured the delta 13C of fatty acid methyl esters. According to the obtained values, we interpreted that the environment was a wetland with C3 plants, but also some C4 shrubs and bushes. The signal is not from a grassland because there are no longer chains of analkaloic acids. Probably the water was a mix between saline and fresh water. My conclusion is that TK was an aquatic environment dominated by floating macrophytes. TK civatarium florence, 3K lower occupation floor were near by a local fluvial plain or marsh system located near a water stream system. There were very few trees, shrubs and aquatic plants. I want to thank Costec, the Tanzanian Antiquities Department and the Nungorongoro Conservation Area Authority for field permits and support. I want to thank IDEA, the Old White Paleoanthropological and Paleoecological Project, my supervisor and the co-authors for field support and organization. Thank you for your attention.